Hey guys, it's Anike the Hazina Girl, and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit special, a little bit different, actually. So if you guys didn't know, me and my sister have a podcast. It's called Black Sister Sekai. Sekai in Japanese means world because we want to introduce you guys to our little black sister world. And in our podcast, we talk about everything from our experiences in Japan, what we've learned along the way. And if you guys are interested in seeing um, more episodes, definitely let me know in the comments, and I'll continue to upload them here on this channel. And if you want to listen to it because you're more of an auditory type of person. You can actually go to Spotify and Apple Podcasts and look up Black Sister Sekai and you will find us there. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Bye! Hello everybody. Hi everyone. And welcome back to the Black Sister Sekai Podcast. Hey. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Today is a very special episode because we have a proper setup y'all we got some equipment we got some equipment we got a nice fancy mic mm -hmm. we got a nice little setup with a computer and everything i don't know if you guys can tell the difference in the quality of the sound hopefully i hope so because yeah. that's kind of the whole point you mm -hmm. know what i mean i think some of y'all thought we were playing we're not playing we want to be official exactly we, we are official business we yeah. mean business up in here so today i'm really excited actually to get right into the topic mm -hmm. Because this is something I feel like we talk about together all the time. Yeah. And I think it's a topic a lot of people can relate to. And that is adulting. Yes. Adulting, adulting, adulting. Oh, and don't forget the glow up that comes with the adulting. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Adulting and glowing up. I think it's not growing up. It's, it's the glowing, glowing up. up. Yeah. That's what we've been doing, right? We have. And the things that I actually want to talk to you about today, I think we're mostly like related to what exactly is adulting. Mm -hmm. um but i feel like lately we've been kind of messy with the way that we shoot our episodes so we decided to prepare questions in advance yes <laughs> so that we can be consistent with it mm -hmm. okay so let's just pull up these questions let's just get right into let's it let's get into it when does adulthood start Neymar? when does it start i feel like adulting starts when you leave your parents house i mean that's in my personal experience um yeah it's when you decide that you want to start a life on your own from scratch yeah because i was gonna say i mean i agree with that but i'm sure there are people who disagree with that because Definitely. they are still i mean they're still adults but yeah, they're living with their parents or whatever mm -hmm. i think i don't know i don't think necessarily that it starts when you leave your parents house but mm -hmm. i think it starts when you realize that you want to start making really serious decisions about your life by yourself Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. like to find serious decisions like really life-changing decisions okay because when i think back to when i felt like i was really becoming an adult it's like the first big life decision i made for myself was not even moving to japan actually the first big life decision i made was probably like when i was in high school and i was like i i want to graduate high school early mm. and that's something that nobody asked me to do that nobody asked me like hey you know do you want to do this thing? Nobody suggested it to me. It was literally like, I woke up one day and was like, yeah, I want to graduate early. And then I just made the decision to like look into what it takes to graduate early. I started consulting with my, you know, guidance counselors and asking mm -hmm. her like, you know, what is it that I need to do? How do I, how can I get credits? How can I do all this stuff? Like that was me making a decision completely on my own, like mm. unprovoked. Mm. Nobody pushed me to do it. I just woke up one day and was like, this is what I want for myself. I see. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. I mean... The reason why I couldn't really answer with a different definition was because I'm talking from my perspective. I feel like that's when it really started. I feel like there's always hints of adulthood. Like, I got a job that made a lot of money. I don't know if that, I mean, by your definition, if that would work really. But, I mean, I think for me, it only really started when I left. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. But wait, are you saying then that you feel like when you had that job, mm -hmm. you were not adulting? No, I didn't really feel like I was because I feel like I was living a lot by people's standards and expectations for me and not so much what I wanted to do for myself. I mean, I knew that I wanted to make more than like the retail job salary because that's what I was doing before. But just because I was sitting at a desk job with other adults didn't make me feel like an adult. I was just like, right. mm, just feel like myself. Yeah. The same old. Yeah. That makes sense, I guess. Mm -hmm. So you felt like, for you, it was when you came here, basically. Yeah, for sure. Like, leaving the comfort of my home, having to come here where there's only just, like, you and me and a bunch of people I don't know with a culture and a language that I don't know and discover that on my own, that was, like, the biggest thing, for sure. I see. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel now that you're adulting? 
Yeah. It feels great, honestly. Yeah. I think, yeah, like, there's, like, I'm having so many, like, epiphany moments of, like, wow, this is what it means to be an adult. Like, um, yeah, I know, just, like, doing my hair the way that I want to. Mm-hmm. And like, your hair looking real good. Thank you, I did it. You know, shout outs to Auntie, Auntie Hilda. Yeah, EJ she Love. is the one who Here's hooks us up, let me tell you. I think, I don't know, I feel like we're probably going to get questions about it because... Yeah. I'm sure there's tons of people who are like, how do you get your hair done in Japan? You just got to look it up, honey. Okay. You, you have to go into the forums. Yeah. The black people forums. The black female forums on yeah. Facebook. And exactly. you find people who braid hair. And it's like, that's a that's a big part. I think that was like a huge part because I had like my bulls of the head, like my bald head for the past like, what, five years or so. Mm-hmm. And when I came here, I was like, no, we're going to grow her out and we're going to do different things things we've always wanted to do yeah so hair is definitely a big thing because it's like how do you want the world to perceive you and then how do you want to be confident like how do you want to present yourself to the world right and also like i feel like confidence always starts with the way that you see yourself yeah and when you feel and look your best Mm -hmm. that's like you're taking off you're true you you can go wherever you want to go yeah and i didn't know that was a big deal but that's something else that i learned but i think the second thing would be like other than hair it's kind of still in like the mitame no region like the appearance yeah area um it's like uh what's it called piercings you know oh yes yeah yourself some piercings you know i got <laughs> quite a few as you can tell for the people who are watching the video but i got you know my most recent one was from uh what's it called four weeks ago i think yeah mm-hmm. it's been exactly a month my septum i got a septum i was pinning for days yeah you've so been afraid. wanting one for forever yeah and I'm just so happy because I think now when I look at you, like how you look now, I'm just like, this is the you that you've always wanted to be. And I know, I know that because every time mm. you came to Japan, every time you came to visit me, you'd be like, oh, man, I just wish that I could get a piercing. Oh, I wish I could do this, that and the other thing. Mm-hmm. And you never did any of them. Yeah. Until this year. Yeah. So I'm proud of you for that. Thank you. Yeah. So that's pretty much what I would say, like appearance wise. And then also just kind of living the life that you want it's very vague but it's pretty much it's really it's self-explanatory yeah you know yeah Yeah. i was gonna say for me i think i started feeling like an adult when Mm. i had like adult worries do you know Mm. what i mean like i wasn't just worrying about like oh man school's so annoying and like oh my mom and dad didn't pick me up from school it was like no i started worrying about like what am I going to eat this week? Right. How am I going to pay my bills? True. How am I going to get myself from point A to point B? True. Am I saving enough money? Mm-hmm. Like, when I started thinking about those things, mm-hmm. that's when I was like, oh, damn. Like, the things I'm worrying about now are just so different. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I remember that happened for the first time when I came to visit Japan. It wasn't even when I moved here. It was mm-hmm. like when I just came here to visit for three months. And at that time, I mean, I was just technically on vacation, you know, but I was still living on my own. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I had a taste of that, like what it's like to just be like taking care of yourself and not have anyone else take care of you except for yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. And I remember coming back from that. I mean, I I think at the time I was like, yeah, I was still 17 when I came back from my trip to Japan. And like my high school friends were like, oh, my God, what are you going to like wear to prom? Like, I'm just like so worried about my dress. And I remember being like, this is all so irrelevant. Like right. the amount of things I had to worry about when I was away versus like what people are now like gossiping about and chit chatting about amongst themselves. Like I just felt so like I'm just at a different place in my life than you guys, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's when I think I had a taste of what it's like to be an adult. I don't think I felt like an adult then, but I was like, oh dang, like this is this is what it means to like level up <laughs> right <laughs> and to like move on to like a different stage of your life than your friends you know mm. so anyway <laughs> so what do you feel like comes to mind when you think of the word adult what's the first thing i mean i think till when i was a kid like my image of adult was like 25 you got a job and yeah. you got a car and <laughs> you're driving yourself from home to work and <laughs> you're paying your bills which now that i think about it is not that it's far off accurate i think the only part of my vision of what i would be like at 25 that doesn't like apply or that isn't accurate is the fact that i i don't have a car mm. which i'm okay with because That's i don't need a car really drives cars yeah. here but then again i'm also not 25 yet so who knows yeah but you're, you're gonna be 25 in two years I know. That's crazy. And actually, almost, it's going to be a year because next year I'm turning 24. <gasps> True. Ugh, saying that, it just gives me a heart attack. <laughs> it's fine, though. Like, I, I think you're you're doing really well. Like, yeah. I mean, one thing I always, like, I always think about living here together with you, you know, just doing, like, you know, plain old everyday things is, mm-hmm. like, you were the example of like what adulting means to me and like i think it was so great to even just have you as like a friend and a sister and be like wow like she's she's adulting and i get to have that like 
person who I can run to and like ask questions while I get to also see you, like witness you living your best adult life. And you're doing great. I'm going to be honest, you're doing really great. But it's so nice to have that because I, yeah, I think you are the example for a lot of things of what it means to be an adult, like what it means to be a friend, an adult friend, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm, (laughs) Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like the friendships that you have when you're an adult versus the friendships you have as a kid are very different. Yeah. And I think you were the perfect example of that here for me Mm. or like what it means to like be an adult and do what you want like how to make things happen i mean this girl's making it happen she's a model you know she got she started this whole sozo thing like the like you know not to say that we're discrediting everybody else but i think you had like that drive and that vision and then you got everybody else and everybody else is like super what's the word putting in the effort Mm -hmm. and working towards like making that vision a reality Mm -hmm. and yeah no i'm just like you've just laid it all down for us yeah even our our younger brothers caleb and josh shout out to you guys um they think the exact same thing about you like we'd have so many conversations back at home and be like dang sanel's doing this oh my gosh that's so great and even mom and dad too like you would inspire them so she got it going on just a little bit of you know just thought i would let you know thank you wow i was not expecting to be showered with compliments right now i'm like a little flustered Mm -hmm. but no i it's weird because i don't really i never once had that thought like i never once had this like feeling of like wow i made it i'm just doing the damn thing like no i really honestly constantly just feel like okay what's next okay what do i need to do next okay now that i'm done this what's next like i feel like Mm -hmm. i'm constantly like almost like on this wheel that i'm just constantly running on and i just yeah, I never stopped to think to myself, like, wow, look how far we've come. Like, it's been, a, it's been a long journey. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I think that's what makes you so good at achieving things. Like, you're just always, like, like rock climbing, you know? Yeah. Get to the next level. Get to, the, you know? Yeah. So that's, I think that's good. That makes you, you know, makes your goals a reality. That's true. But I also think that it's my biggest flaw and also my biggest asset at the same time. Because, because of the fact that I do so many things at mm-hmm. once, like it's hard for me to focus on one thing and get mm. one thing done mm. um but at the same time yeah because i'm doing so much i'm also accomplishing Wait, really? a lot you think that yeah like i feel sometimes i'm just like i'm doing so many things at once that it's hard for me to focus on one thing like i'll be doing one project and then i'm like oh damn i gotta do Isn't another that project. A good thing i mean technically it is but like let's say for example you you really want to finish a, a particular project right mm-hmm. but you've also got like three other things that you have to do mm-hmm and then you end up doing those three things, but you don't oh, end up getting all okay. three things done, but you right. started them. Like, I feel like that's a lot of the things in I life. I see. It's like I start things, and then I start other things, and then I start other things, and then the other things are just kind of lacking. Mm-hmm. And I think that, to me, has always been like, oh, man, that's something I want to work on. I and see. speaking of which, actually, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to, like, scream. No, no, you're good. You didn't <laughs> scream at all. I was just like, I felt a question coming for me. Oh. Mm-hmm. And speaking of which, actually, mm-hmm. uh, I wanted to get into some questions. We, I think we actually, well... I mean, I'm acting like you don't know the questions. You know them because you Mm -hmm. literally... We looked them up together. Yes, we did. I think it's going to be a really good series of questions to ask ourselves because Mm -hmm. we literally are about to start a new year. Yeah. So it's going to be good, you know? We Mm -hmm. can uh, ask ourselves some things, reflect on the past year, think about what we've uh, been up to. Hopefully I don't mix up 2019 for 2020 because 2020 just erased... Wait, we're in 2021. We're in 2021. What are you talking about? (laughs) Girl, it's a mess. It's a mess. Girl, do you remember anything about this year? You good? No, I don't. You need a refresher? (laughs) You need to scroll through your old photos? Yeah, I'm good. We're okay. Okay, so let's just get right into the questions then. Mm -hmm. Um, The first one is, what was I doing a year ago? Um, A year ago, it had been about 24 days exactly to the day. Um that I'd been in Japan. I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but I was probably just moping around. <laughs> what do you mean moping around? <laughs> moping around is like, I was just so like, I had so many like hot and cold feelings about being here. Like I was excited to be abroad, but I was also like, I miss my family. What am I doing here? I don't know what I want. <laughs> like, yeah. And I mean, Sena and I talk about this a lot. I was a completely different person a year yeah, ago. Like you I was- really were. I was low key kind of depressed. You were bald, you had yeah. no piercings. You were not, you were complaining about your clothes every day. Really? You were like, I need to buy new clothes. These clothes are atrocious. Why did I bring this from Canada? This is terrible. You complained about your clothes at least once a day. (laughs) Oh, yeah. 
for sure. I think it's because, again, I just wasn't happy with the way I looked, yeah. with myself, and just with a lot of things. You felt like your appearance didn't reflect who you were Who inside, I actually right? was, and it's because of money. Like, I was just constantly being told, like, to save to come here, which I'm grateful for, and it did end up helping me out. But I just wasn't able to see, like, what was ahead. Like, I just had this very tunneled vision. It was very dark. So that's where I was a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, what about you? I think a year ago, I was at a completely different place. I was finishing um, my last year of fashion college. Mm. And I remember this time last year, I was actually preparing for my graduation show, Mm -hmm. which was in early January. So I was really cramming in like the last bits of sewing, the last bits of scrap fabric. Yeah, I was really just, you know, pedal to the metal trying to get through this um, fashion show. And I was also in a completely different relationship. Mm. Okay. Okay. That changed. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, and I think, like, I thought I was happy, mm. but I was really stressed. Mm. And I was just constantly thinking about, like, my future, what I'm going to do. Because, of course, at that time, I, I was wondering what I'm going to do for a job. Like, I really was questioning myself and being like, damn, like, what am I going to do with my life after I graduate fashion college? I really right. don't know what the heck I'm going to do. Because at that time, all the job options that were available to me were just no longer a thing because of COVID. Mm. And so... Oh, that's tough. Yeah. I remember that too. And having to job hunt when people were not hiring was a struggle and a half. So I was just, yeah, I was really struggling. I was constantly worrying. Um, but I remember like towards the end of 2020, all I wanted to do was finish my graduation show. I just mm. wanted to get that over so I could focus on getting a job. Uh, yeah, I remember like Bunga wasn't really everything that you would imagine it would be. Like I think... By the second year, am I wrong? Yeah. Like, you you were just done. Like, you yeah. were just done. My third year was a little bit better, but my second year was definitely really rough. Like, that was mm. probably the closest I've ever come to considering quitting. So, when I got into my third year, things got a little bit yeah. easier because, like, it wasn't as intense when it comes to, like, the assignments and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, mostly I was just focusing on, like, graduating, getting my show done, um, and then getting a job. So, it was a little mm. bit better my third year, but still, like, I think I felt like man, was it the right choice that I made to mm. go to Bingo? Like, I, w- I was really on the fence about that. But, of course, at that point, it's, like, it's too late for me to, like, right. you know, yeah. be regretting things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, uh, let's go to the second question now. Mm-hmm. Um, do you enjoy the way that you spend your time? Um, right now, yes. Mm. Absolutely. First of all, I never had, like, a period of time in my life where I could just be home and work from home and really get everything done. And I think I'm a homebody, so, yeah. like, I very much enjoy being able to just like get everything done from home. Um, So yeah, right now I'm just spending my time doing all the stuff that I love. Mm. I'm doing, you know, Black Sister Sekai with you. I'm doing Sozo, our YouTube channel and collaborative. um, Yeah, our collaborative group, Mm -hmm. you know, and project. Mm -hmm. And I'm also doing modeling, which I absolutely love. And then I'm also working as like a social media, you know, marketer slash advertising or whatever Mm -hmm. and doing branding as well for a company. So I'm doing all the things that I love. Like if I could do all of this completely full time and like officially on like a legitimate full time 5,000 year visa in Japan, that would be great. Mm. (laughs) That would be 5,000 year year visa. Yeah, it's not a thing. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what I mean? Like that like level of security where you're just like, I don't got to worry about visas. You know, I'm, I'm good. I see. Dang, yeah. I didn't know you felt like that. I like, do. I'm like very happy right now. And I'm good. I'm low key a little bit scared about how next year is going to go because I'm going back to school again and I feel mm. like putting school back into the equation is going to really just stir up the pot. I see. In a good way obviously because, yeah. you know, I'll get a degree, yay, but like I'm a bit worried, not going to lie. I feel like I've been living the good life up until now, so. I feel like there's always the option of like graduating early, so I mean, that's true. not. Yeah. And I mean, worst case scenario just drop out. <laughs> life is too much <laughs> for all of that stuff. It's true. true. No, like true. it's 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 too much. That you don't true. you don't need to put yourself through yeah. that. Um what about you? I feel like I'm getting there. Like I'm at this point where I'm just really craving growth. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, like I feel like I was off of social media like instagram i never made an instagram account until i came here um and and i never made a tiktok account either until you like yeah got drew me in pushed you over the deep end you really did do you um, feel like you're wasting your time on social media though i feel like sometimes i am like i feel like i use it to procrastinate oh. from doing the things that i should be doing to push me forward because i feel like i'm a lot of the times i'm afraid of a lot of things i'm afraid of failing i'm afraid of not succeeding i'm afraid of just like 
a lot of things yeah. so i use social media to like procrastinate and just like drown my thoughts in like bing bongs and like, <laughs> like i know what i'm at you're you. done all of that stuff you're done <laughs> all that good immediately stuff. no yeah immediately no <laughs> And, um, yeah, I'm going to be honest, like I have all of these things that I, I know I love, like, I know I love waking up early in the morning and like going for a walk and like doing yoga in the morning and like writing and reading, but it's like, I don't make time for those things. Cause Wait a minute, just... I didn't know you did yoga. Yeah, I do every morning oh, now. Oh, wow, look at you. I know. <laughs> She's a woman. You don't even know woman. me. <laughs> Let me be a woman. woman. Okay, this is not a singing podcast. <laughs> but yeah, no, like, I know I like all of those things, and those are things that I want to incorporate in my daily life, but it's like, I just drown myself in social media till the late hours of the night, and then I have no, like, like, I wake up groggy, you know? I wake mm. up groggy, and I'm just like, oh, and then it, like, that affects the way that my day goes, because the night before I was up doing things that just did not need to be done. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to be honest. I feel like it affects my mood a lot. Like I'm just like, Mo finished. Like I just, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm done. Like, you know what I mean? It just makes me kind of go day by day and not actually do what I want. If that makes any so sense. So what about right now? Cause right now you're on break. You're yeah. not going to school for Christmas break. I mean, right now it's kind of like this, you know time period that i have off of school is making me realize that i need to put what i want first mm. it always has to be it yeah. cannot be put off and i think um yeah it's hard because again i'm typically i don't want to do the things that i want to do because of fear mm. does that does that make sense like i'm mm -hmm. too scared to do the things that i want to do or or it's lack of consistency it's either one of those two fear or lack of consistency because consistency is hard you got to be motivated self-motivated you got to want what's best for yourself you got to have self-control so i feel like you know to sum it up i'm not i don't like the way i spend my time but i'm working on it like literally i've been building this morning routine you are not aware of it, but I have been. Yeah, no, I had no clue. So, yeah. wow, good for you. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't got a morning routine. I just wake up, roll out of bed, yeah. and start working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I wish I could. I wish I, yeah. I wish I did better with that. But it's mm -hmm. okay. I'm working on it, too. We're working on it, too. Yes. Together. What were you going to say? Um, no, because I the reason why I'm working on my morning routine specifically is because I realize I'm a morning person, but also because I was listening to this other podcast of this lady um, where she was basically just talking about how, like, a lot of the people, like, I guess you'd say successful people. They say that um, the morning, the way that you start your morning is so important. And she just gave like really three really like good key like things to remember or things to apply in your morning routine mm -hmm. so that you can kind of start the day off right. And I listened to that. I was so inspired. And I was like, girl, we got to get it together. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's that's all. Nice. That's yeah. a great thing to like change, especially as the new year is beginning, mm. you know? Yeah. And one thing, another thing. Can I just mention this? Mm -hmm. Another thing that I'm just choosing not to... My, it can come later. Should oh, I say it now? Okay. You should say it later. Okay. I feel it's going to be long. Yeah, it is. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Okay. The next question is, what do I need to learn next? <laughs> um, yeah. Overcome my fears. I feel like, just simply put, overcome my fears. I feel like, again, I want to do a lot of things. I'm just afraid of a lot of things. Like, perfect example is this hair. Okay, your girl went through lots of anti-black thoughts that had to be un unrooted, unweeded. This is a why because you have soft locks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, I put kudai na. Oh gosh, kudai hanashi. Kudai hanashi. Yeah, that's, that's No, I said kudai na hanashi. Oh, you um. You don't say that. It's kuraku. Yeah, but it's kind of the same thing as how they say like okina. You know, it's like oki. Oh, is it? Yeah, but they say okina. Okay. What do you feel like you need to learn next, Anna? Um, I feel like the thing I need to learn next is how to be more scheduled. Mm. Um, I feel like right now I just kind of do things um, that need to get done and I just try my best to like use the time that I have to get them done. But I feel like if I want to really push myself to the next level, I need to start having a routine. So yeah, I, I just feel like I need to put together like a proper schedule, a proper routine. And I need to like get it together you know like mm -hmm. i feel like right now i'm getting stuff done but i'm not getting stuff done in a timely manner like i want to get things done within a day and then i get them done in two days or i say that i want to get something done um by the end of the week and then it takes me two weeks like i don't like that and mm -hmm. i feel like the way to fix that would be to be more like 
scheduled like to be more have like a more routine mm -hmm. way to do things if that makes mm -hmm. sense yeah so that's yeah what I learned. routines are so powerful they are like they really make or break you yeah it's it's really underestimated like i don't think people realize that yeah and i think i used to think like oh routines like that's so like for rich people or yeah. whatever like people who really got their <laughs> life <people>? together <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like really like highly successful people that like have it all together they got a lot of money they uh. have like their routine down but like it's not it's just a decision mm. you have to make and then you just make changes and that's it you know mm. so yeah, yeah that's what i want to work on next year next question name the things in life you are most passionate about Ooh, i love talking about things that make you passionate wait what that make you passionate like make yourself passionate no. let me restart Ooh, i love talking about things that i'm passionate <laughs> about <laughs> 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 it's so fake. I love it. Wow. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, I would say the things that I'm passionate about are my people. I love my people. I love black people. I love me some African Americans, some people from the Caribbean. You know, people from the motherland, Africa's. You know, everywhere from the islands. I lo I love our people. I don't know where that love. I think that love comes from our our family, our upbringing. We just had a lot of you know, you know just positive black experience yeah. and we met different kinds of black people yeah that was that's definitely uh, a thing I'm, I'm, I'm are the mics making you nervous yes <laughs> 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 but yeah i would say that's definitely you know something i'm passionate about mm -hmm. other than that i would say i'm definitely passionate about art like over i realized the other day that i overall just love all forms of art theater literature fine art music dance literally everything mm -hmm. all kinds of art just makes me just makes my heart skip a beat you know mm -hmm. um and i would also say oh i forgot to mention fashion but that's kind of in the art category too fashion um another thing i'm passionate about i mean i already mentioned it they're kind of all in the same art bowl but if i were to pick my favorite from the art bowl it would be like literature books mm -hmm. i love books mm -hmm. and fashion mm -hmm. and music Mm -hmm. those would be the three love it thank you i think that's very accurate yeah you definitely are passionate about those things yeah i think for me though the things that i'm passionate about at least lately mm -hmm. is like i've been really passionate about myself no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Narcissist? no 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 i i think i've been passionate <laughs> about like just mm, different like creative outlets like finding different creative outlets i mean like this is one you know like mm -hmm. podcasting is something i had never done before but i was really like getting into in the past year mm. and i think i never really considered trying it out for myself but i think this year i've just been so into this idea of expressing yourself in as many different ways as possible mm. like and, what do you mean like basically like you know this year obviously i've been modeling modeling is something i've been doing for like a few years now mm -hmm. but the things that i've been doing for the first time is like doing a group project like sozo you know like we're doing basically yeah like a creative collective where we're a bunch of different creative people trying different things together that's like an opportunity that i think has been so much fun for me because there's so many things i've never done before i've never even considered doing before that i'm trying out for the first time because we're in a group setting where everyone is kind of doing that thing or whatever mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. um and i think like yeah, lately I've just been really passionate about trying to find different ways to express myself, trying to find different ways to, like, create new things and yeah. put myself out there. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, like, being in fashion college was great. It was such a fun experience. And my whole life I was like, I'm the fashion girl. I want to do fashion. I want to make clothes. I love sketching clothes. I just, I'm a, I'm a fashion girl. Mm -hmm. But then, like, going to fashion college, I saw people who were like so passionate about it that that's all they wanted to do in their entire lives and then i had this epiphany where i was like i actually don't just want to do fashion like i love being a jack of all trades i love doing different things and i think that in the future i don't see myself just doing fashion it's just mm. not like yeah something i see myself doing you know it's not to say that i'm never going to do fashion ever and that's mm -hmm. just not going to be my thing anymore it's just not going to be as linear yeah exactly yeah. it's not going to be the only thing that i ever do that's, right that's just not me yeah. So, yeah, this year's been fun because I think I've been discovering all these different things that I'm capable of doing mm -hmm. um, that I never knew that I was capable yeah. of doing. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I'm passionate about that. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the next question. Yes. Is there anything I feel like is missing from my life? That's a good question. Mm. Anything I feel like is missing from my life? 
I don't know. I know. For you me, do? yeah. Adventure. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That was such a lame answer. It's true, though. Like, I feel like I'm missing this sense of, like, adventure. I feel uh, like I was just very, like... Like going out, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, not, okay. not going out to the club, you know. I mean, that would be nice. But, <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm missing the sense of spontaneity. Oh, the okay. sense of, like, you want to do it. You, you, Yeah, that kind of thing. Okay. Because I, I feel like I'm, I'm very, like calculated and i'm like no i'll just stay in my four walls which is good for the pandemic but i mean girl you gotta live your life yeah it's not good yeah. for your mental yeah exactly i agree with that actually because it's true i feel like this past year like i don't know a lot of my like really close friends are not in japan mm. and a lot of people that i got really close to in the past couple of years that i've been here are either no longer here or i just don't see them as often as i mm-hmm. did before maybe and I, I think that's kind of made me a little bit like a homebody mm-hmm. and now i can't be bothered to like go out very often because yeah. i'm just like i'm good at home i'll be fine mm. so it's true like i think i do need to like get out there a bit more like travel a bit more yeah i hope that next year i can do that and you could probably do that through you know your school well yeah maybe maybe hopefully. maybe i'll go on exchange or something i feel mm. like that'll be fun leave japan for a bit because i've been here for like oh goodness gracious five years like mm-hmm. and i haven't even moved cities you know mm. like yeah i moved apartments but i'm s- still in tokyo and i feel like i just need to like get a taste of somewhere else you know what i mean who knows yeah who knows um, stay tuned i'll keep you guys updated so moving on to the next question number seven pick someone you really admire and list out the reasons you admire them hmm um i'm gonna go for non-family members <laughs> good choice uh, um yeah just you know just to mix it up just to change it up i feel like i already showered you with compliments arigato, arigato. you're welcome um i think the first person that comes to mind and you already know this is solange no smith mm-hmm. i absolutely love her she's like um just a pioneer for black people like i love her album a seat at the table um and I can't remember the other one. Oh, when I when I when I come home. I let's hope that's correct. Or else people correct. might tell for you. I promise I'm a fan. <laughs> but yeah, no, she like is just amazing, and I think I just love her, the way she's using her artistry to like speak to Black people in a different way. And I mean, when I was listening to her album, her music, I'm just like, wow, I'm elite. I'm a part of this club. Ooh, and okay. I've never felt that way with like. A, an artist before yeah um and she just really makes you feel like yeah you you the queen you the king you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. um f- just for simply being black and that's like amazing you know living in this world in this day and age and um yeah no she's amazing because she literally comes up with the concepts for like her shoots like she's a creative director mm-hmm. you know she comes up with like obviously she's a musician she's a singer she's a producer she like makes the choreographies for her like live performances which if you've seen them in person or on youtube on the internet somewhere um she's very creative and yeah. like um yeah and i think it's great that she's kind of the you know she's kind of she's a sister hey. hey she's a sister you know of course to the well um you know sekaiju ano shiraita hito no he did not say that sekaiju de ano sekaiju de what are you trying to say? You mean I thought, uh, like world-renowned artist. That's what I said. No, you said like <laughs> I'm like I don't know what that is. I'm still learning Japanese, guys. It's okay. Anyways, um, so yeah, so she's like really awesome, and because like you know having Beyonce as a sister, she didn't let that stop her from like being like, oh, uh, the world will never know me. Like no, they will know. And she's even had like her like what's it called guggenheim museum like her works be posted in the guggenheim museum and stuff like that and i'm like girl you get it so yeah so i just love her she's just a trailblazer she's cool she's doing her own thing she's doing it for black people and she's using her artistry in new and innovative ways that every time just you know pull on my heartstrings and i'm waiting for a new album because um it's about time that's true i think she's dropping a new one soon. i think so yeah she was giving hints on instagram i'm not sure though we'll see yeah but i've heard you go on and on about her i will never stop she's amazing yeah she is pretty great I, I you so put me cool. onto her too because i really yeah. wasn't into her stuff until you mentioned it yeah were you gonna say something oh like yeah it? no and also like she's like discovered like other smaller black artists who like she's brought them up through her oh i can't remember oh my gosh her artistry her artistry yes <laughs> like sampa and kalala oh okay cool yeah i don't know, Do you know sampa? no oh. you need to you need to hook i know kalala you know kalala i have to I should put me that. on oh yes. yeah you you have i always sing about yeah anyways 
What about you? Um, a person I admire. I think a person I admire personally, I mean, I feel like this is obvious. I've mentioned it a lot. Is Queen Riri. Okay. Oh, yeah. Queen Riri is just doing the damn thing. I feel mm. like the reason why I love her so much is because she really does embody what it means to be a successful jack of all trades. Yeah. And everybody knew her for her music, and everybody's like, we're on a when's the new album. Oh. But like the truth is, she doesn't need to she produce doesn't need music to. anymore. She like, doesn't owe us anything. No. She is, is she a billionaire with a B? I think she is. I think it's a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. She's a billionaire now. Yeah. And she's making bank. She's making coin. Mm-hmm. And she's not writing songs anymore. And I think the people that are begging for her to write new songs should let her be because the truth is, like, that's what it means to be a jack of all trades, I feel yeah. like, is really just you have tons of talents, tons of different things that you're doing, and you just know how to make coin from it. And it's you don't got to do the same thing every single day. You yeah. know what I mean? So I love her for that. She's, mm. like, obviously just amazing singer, super talented. Like, her fashion is impeccable. Mm. She's literally my fashion icon. She's just always on point. And then she not only came out with, like, a makeup line, she also came out with skincare. She yep. also came out with lingerie. Her lingerie show for Fenty X Savage is always... It's always crazy. It's always Amazing. just on point. Yeah. And she's just, like, trailblazing, just mm-hmm. changing the game when it comes to, like, you know, body, body positivity. Yeah. And also, um, what is it? Fashion. She's yeah, fashion literally... in general. Yeah. Also, like, when she came out with, like, all those different skin tone, you know, like, shades for her Fenty foundation and, like, True. different skin tones. People were shooketh. And I feel like that should be the norm. It should. She just, like, opened she up a lot of people's it. eyes. She, she took that opportunity. Yeah. All of those, like, big brand name makeup brands had the opportunity to do that they just never did nope for whatever reason i don't know why never did so so she did it yeah Yeah. and i just i feel like that's the kind of person i want to be like just doing a Mm -hmm. bunch of things but also like doing each thing well Mm -hmm. like just being successful Mm. with the different things that i'm doing and i just admire her for that she's can i just say it's pretty amazing that we both really admire two really great black women i love that i love that i love that too yeah and i can also very like i can see like how our values align and why like it just makes sense mm. as to why we admire who we admire mm-hmm. you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i see queen weary i'm like i see that in the way you you comport yourself the, w- the decisions you make you know the way that you're going about your life and i see that for myself too when it comes to Solange. so that's this is really cool yeah it is yeah i love that for us wow look at for us. us oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay we need to be <laughs> <laughs> next question next a little question bit of a serious is... question oh is it yeah kind of okay go ahead you ask it yeah uh how do you speak to yourself in your mind oh <sighs> sam i ain't really thought about this one. Oh. um how do i speak to myself in my mind? i feel like i try not to beat myself up mm. i really do like i feel like a lot of what i'm telling myself is like it's okay you'll be fine just keep going it's okay don't worry about that thing. It's okay. Just focus on that. Like, I, a lot of it is reassurance. Mm. And I think that's also why my love language is words of affirmation, or mm. one of my top love languages mm. is words of affirmation. Because if somebody can give me that, instead yeah. of me constantly having to give that to myself, yeah, it makes me feel really loved. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I think that's how I try to practice self-love, is by being like, you're fine. You'll be okay. It's all good. And of course, that's dangerous, because it can, like, border to the edge of denial. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like for the most part, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just constantly trying to encourage myself and I'm trying to be my own best friend. And a lot of the conversations I have with myself is like, you know, yeah, you haven't reached there yet, but you'll be fine. You'll figure it out. You'll be okay. Yeah, it's pretty much just a lot of self encouragement, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. What That's you? good. You don't have any negative thoughts, girl? I mean, no, of course. Of course okay. I do. But I, I honestly, I shut them out. <laughs> mm. How do you shut them out? You're like, Stop. I think I'm very good at like, <laughs> compo- like, what's the word? No, no. It's not compose. It's self, uh, like compartmentalizing. Yeah. What does that mean? It means like you just put things aside. Mm. Like this goes there, that goes here. Like, oh, this is garbage. Yeah. It's this like, is good. exactly. Okay. It's like when the, the negative thoughts start to come in. Mm hmm. I am really good at repressing them. Sometimes, actually, I wouldn't say I'm really good. It's just that I just do that. Mm. Like, I'll distract myself or I'll think about something else or I'll work on something. Really? Or, yeah. Like, I try not to let Dang. myself beat myself up because the truth is the world is going to do that for me. True. The world is going to make me feel like trash. Mm. The world is going to say things about me that are, mm. you know, not so nice. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I just don't need to add to all that noise. It's true. Like, I just need to be my own best friend and so constantly true. be uplifting myself. And I know that that maybe sounds a little bit fake. Like, oh, I'm just like, I'm just great. No, I'm not great. I do have dark thoughts and bad mm. thoughts and whatever. But I just am I'm working on that because, yeah, I don't let them in, basically, is I the see. answer. I see. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, it 
had to it had to drastically change this year like it was very bad mm. um and i i was never aware of th- my own thoughts like until this year when i was like oh negative self-talk is a thing mm-hmm. oh uh the person who you speak to the most throughout the day is yourself mm-hmm. and that defines the way that you again carry yourself in the world yeah and i mean not to get into the law of attraction it's not necessarily what i believe in but it's true like you do like if you walk into a room f- not feeling confident feeling ugly because that's what you're telling yourself people will treat you as such yes you know like for it's, sure it's not it's not fake it's yeah. real you yeah. know mm-hmm. and so i had to change that it was a lot of negative things i mean you could name it is it was all there you know and um yeah like i i realized like the biggest epiphany for me was i realized that i babysit kids for like you know as a part-time job and i'm so gentle with them i'm so kind Mm. i'm so patient i'm so forgiving but when it comes to myself i'm constantly beating myself up yeah constantly saying all these things that are so so hurtful Mm -hmm. um and that prevent like that make me want to hide myself yeah you know Mm -hmm. and then and then when i'm hiding i'm like why am i hate being alone with myself because i'm my worst enemy very deep but it's very real um and so yeah i was like we need to change this so um recently like i (laughs) it's a a small victory but it's a big victory at the same time we were writing an exam for my japanese language class Mm -hmm. obviously all in japanese and you know it's the end of the year like not end of the year but end of semester test so to go on to the next level and i was like telling senna when i came home i'm so happy because i managed to stop doing this negative self-talk while doing like doing the test because a lot of the people like at the end of the test were like oh i failed that oh that was not good i mean it's normal to Mm. feel anxious after doing a test but i think for me i was like i was like no i did really well like i feel good like yeah i was not like i didn't have a single regret of course there was mistakes like that's a given i'm a student i'm learning japanese right now but i didn't have a regret a single regret like and i wasn't like you could have done this better you'll fail and lo and behold when i got my results back i was like wow this is not bad you know yeah so yeah like i'm being more patient with myself of course there's still moments where i catch myself but i'm like girl are we really doing this that's do we need to do this is catching yourself yeah like catching the fact that you're falling into that like spiral of mm. negative thoughts and then stopping yourself in your tracks is literally the most important thing because mm-hmm. if you even just let one little negative thought slip in it literally snowballs and so it true. just gets out of control yeah you know so catching it in its tracks especially when it's like you just randomly started having negative thoughts like that's the moment where you need to be like whoa take a step back why am i having this thought what's going Mm -hmm. on and reassess from there yeah and honestly shout out to Brittany lee on youtube if you guys know her if you don't know her check her out she's amazing she's amazing and she literally helped me realize all of these things Mm. um yeah because i really wasn't aware of these things like it's your self-talk is so important what you're telling yourself and what you believe about yourself yeah that's so important yeah true next question Next question is, what things do you really want to learn before you die? Oh, this is so good. Huh, what things do I want to learn? I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just so curious to know what every chapter of life brings, you know? Like, what does that look like? What, how different is your life in your 20s than it is in your 40s, than it is in your 50s or your 60s? God willing, if I make it there, you know? But that kind of thing, you know? I'm just... Mm just so curious as to know because life is so interesting and Mm. so beautiful yeah and like yeah i don't know just like that's all i'm really curious about i don't know just like what does life bring what are the new challenges what are the new the new lessons where yeah as you proceed and and move on in life that makes sense i i feel like it sounds very vague but i know what you mean like you're just looking forward to learning whatever it is in life Mm -hmm, basically mm -hmm. yeah for me i have one that's very concrete actually really yeah and that's just i want to learn how to manage my money better i feel like i'm trash with money i'm not trash i feel like i'm better than i was before for sure but i want to be i want to be the best i don't want to be just okay Mm. like you know yeah so i feel like yeah the next step in my life is really to figure out and manage money properly especially Mm -hmm. because i'm going back to school so i'm gonna be you know racking up that student (laughs) debt i'm not excited about that one but i want to like figure out how to overcome that and start making money and then like just be stacking up my money you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like i want to like really just learn how to do that um and i'm hoping that this next year i'll be able to learn how to do that and be really successful at it so. yeah you're like reading forex or whatever it's called isn't it? i mean yeah i was like into it for a bit but like the truth is like before i get into like forex like i need to learn how to like manage the little money that right. i do have now before i start like trying to make millions you know like that's 
yeah that's not the right like, that is true. step to take like i i realized that and i was like okay mm. let's calm down a little bit you know yeah 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 so anyway that's great yeah next question um what ways can i better my life in the next month Ooh, good question i mean it's perfect timing because next year is i know it is january perfect timing. january 2022 new year yep um hmm i don't know I haven't really thought about this one. Actually, no, that's not true. I have thought about this one. Mm-hmm. There's one thing that I've been dying to do, and that is like just become more physically active. Mm-hmm. Because I realize now that I'm 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 kind of like past. Well, it's not past yet, but I'm getting to the point where I will be past my peak, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so before I let it get to that dire right. point where like it's just out of control and I don't know what to do with myself, I want to like get into like a good active like rhythm. And just be able to keep up with that for, like, you know, the upcoming years of my life. But I feel like right now, like, I'm pretty much a couch potato. I'm not really doing anything to, like, be active other than what I do pretty much on a daily basis, which Mm. is, like, walk around town. Run to catch that densha. Exactly. Run to catch that densha because she ain't waiting She's leaving. That train. She's She's leaving. You got to book it. You got five (laughs) minutes. Um, So, yeah, that's kind of what I want to do. I'm thinking of taking up pole dancing. I'm thinking mm. of doing, I want to like start going to the gym actively too. I used mm. to do that and I want to get back into that. Yeah. I also want to get a bicycle, start mm. biking around town. I think mm-hmm. that'd be really, really fun. And it's possible if I get there, maybe start doing like small runs here and there. Mm. I think that would be kind of cool too. If I could get into that, who mm-hmm. knows? We'll see. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking of Nice for the next month. Yeah. I think for me, um, the ways that I can better my life in the next month is number one taking every single day as a single unit like not thinking three months ahead six months ahead a year ahead what's gonna happen Mm. what are we gonna do Mm -hmm. literally all i know is a day yeah that's the only unit that i'm choosing to live my life by because i had a lot of anxious thoughts and that those anxious thoughts would make me procrastinate Mm -hmm. on everything that i've ever wanted to do or accomplish in my life Mm. and i'm not about that anymore all i know is today what can i do right now all i got is 10 minutes 15 minutes how can i use this 10 minutes 15 minutes to better myself to do what i want to get for to get closer to my goals and even this whole new year new me i'm over it like it's just (laughs) all i know is today and tomorrow and the next and the next you know what i mean um so yeah one step at a time one step at a time um you're gonna say something yeah i was gonna say i think that's why people are really into bullet journaling because literally it's it's about like taking it day by day mm-hmm. and then reflecting back back on the month and then again taking it day by day like mm. it's not about being like 25 years from now i hope i have no. a mansion in the bahamas no. like no no just talk about right now exactly. what can you fix right now you got yeah. bills to pay you got places to be mm-hmm. you got things to do you got to work your job you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so focus on that yeah and i would say the next thing is definitely like doing what i want put prioritizing myself i have a life you have a life we all have lives they crisscross and they and they you know yeah they crisscross with each other but at the end of the day my life is my life it's my own path and just constantly putting myself first putting what i need next first you know um so not going at the pace of everybody else but going at my own pace because i know what i need and i want to be happy and i want to do what i want to do you know Mm -hmm. um yeah i like that because prioritizing yourself is again another one of those things that's like it just it sounds easy when you say it, mm-hmm. but when things actually start to like pile up and stuff, that's when you realize like, oh crap, I'm no longer prioritizing myself. You yeah, know? So. exactly. Yeah. And I think like concretely what that means for me is again, like I mentioned, is like having a healthy morning routine. Mm-hmm. Like for me that, that the morning sets the tone for me. I already mentioned this before, but yeah, like doing the things that I love in the morning or like, yeah, just prioritizing myself at the start of the day. And mm. I think that for me helps me be grateful and prepares me for what I want to accomplish next, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, Is that it for the questions? Uh, yeah, and then the, the, wait, the bonus question that I had for the two of us. Oh, uh, yes. What piece of advice would you give me and what piece of advice would I give you? Since, you know, we live together, we know each other, we're sisters. Um, I think my number one piece of advice that I would give you is don't overthink it. Mm. Trust your gut and go with your gut okay Mm -hmm. because let me tell you that sucker is gonna take you right where you need to (laughs) Uh. no because like i feel like your your gut instinct is something that's so like representative of how you truly feel Mm. and i think you oftentimes have like a very strong gut instinct about something but a lot of the times it's like the, the thoughts that surround that that prevent you from you know acknowledging that feeling that you have right so i just think yeah my advice to you would be don't overthink things just make the decision that you feel at the bottom of your heart is really the right one yeah you know 
I love that. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm at this bridge where I'm trying to decide whether to go left or right when it comes to university. Yeah. And I think you'll make the right choice with that. Like, you'll figure yeah. it out. You'll, you know, you'll make <laughs> the choice you. that's, that's right for you. So, mm. yeah. Thank you. I think for my piece of advice to you would be that you just take better care of yourself. Better, when I word it with the word better, it sounds like, oh, you're doing a <laughs> trash job. But I mean, just like caring for yourself, being so gentle with yourself. Because I think that you receive that so well when I do, you know, just small things here and there to be like, so now can you just yeah, let's, let's have dinner together. Or like, you know, do you need a blanket? You want some tea? You know, that kind of thing. And I think that you need to be doing that more and like implementing that more in like a date in your daily routine. And yeah, because you're very, you're very delicate. You're, 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 you're delicate. You're worth lots. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks. You're welcome. No, I know what you mean. Cause I think I'm very like hard on myself. Like yeah. I'm very like rough, like push myself over the edge yeah, yeah, yeah. you know take myself to the limit like i'm very hard on myself sometimes yeah so it's true that sometimes like the little things is what makes a difference i agree and sometimes i pity you because i'm like why are you sleeping on the couch with your full clothes and your makeup <laughs> on and then I, all i can do is here sit down here's a blanket here's your makeup wipe okay you done you okay you cold okay yeah. bye you know you have to expose me like i mean love. it's <laughs> you can edit that it's fine i won't i'll yeah. keep it in it's, okay. it's the truth yeah. no it's true i i know that i drive myself to the edge sometimes and that's one of the things that like i really appreciate like living with you because i feel like you really you know me and you know that i do that to myself and so a lot of times you don't criticize me you're never like what are you doing you crazy <laughs> you just like no nah, yeah. like i see that you're working hard but mm-hmm. you know take care of yourself so yes. i appreciate that that's true i you're should welcome. do that yeah, and now the question I have for you guys, I haven't, I, I already came up with it. Oh, wow. I told you. She's prepared. I'm prepared. I'm prepared. Okay, so the question I have for you guys is, when was the last time you did something for the first time? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay. Found that on Pinterest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. It's fine. But yeah, so let us know. There's going to be a few options popped down there. Think about it, guys. You know, your life is meant to be lived. Don't waste a second. You don't know how much longer you have, but... That should make you want to live your life to the fullest. You know true. what I'm saying? It's very true. And like the last time I did something, for, oh sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. The last time I did something for the first time is literally right now. <gasps> ah! What what was that? With the new shooting? Yeah, with this new equipment. New equipment. You know, trying to figure out this whole podcasting thing. It's been fun, but yeah, today doing this for the first time has been a lot of fun. Mm. I get a high off of doing new things. You know what I mean? Mm, I think mm, that's mm. like that's my drug. Mm. So, what's your answer? Oh, I have to give an answer? Of course, yeah. We can't oh. ask the people and not answer the question. I mean, the last time I did something for that. I mean, I started working out by myself in my room. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Is that is that a first time? Yeah, thing? no, that works. I just restarted. I just restarted. Oh, then that doesn't count. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay well that's a fail yeah um well we're excited to read you guys' answers mm-hmm. actually technically we can only take answers from people on youtube so if you're watching on youtube you can reply YouTube. in the comments yeah spotify on spotify you can't answer like actually, no not in the comments we can put like options, a poll like, yeah off, we'll like, try yesterday we'll see long, if long, long, long. you're listening from spotify and you see a poll then you know answer the poll go ahead leave mm-hmm. us your answers mm-hmm. and if you're watching on youtube make sure to comment down below let us know and um uh, yeah This has been great. This has been great. I enjoyed this greatly. Um, We wish you guys a happy new year. Yes. Hope you guys spend a really great, you know, Christmas holidays with your family. Yes. Make sure to just live your best life in 2022, okay? Don't let people stop you from being your best self. Period. Okay. Bye. Bye.